No, no, continue. <laughs> what were you were saying? I was gonna go to a dark place. No, don't go to a dark place. <laughs> we're on the light side. Yeah, okay. Alright, start us off, bucko. Alright. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Outer Rim. Uh, my name is Rich, and this is Nikos, and we're here with another episode, episode 16. Can you believe it, Nikos? We're it's on episode 16 already. Number 1-6, and you know what they say when it's 1-6. They say go like and subscribe to this oh, YouTube video. Oh, what a transition. And go follow us on Twitter at the Outer Rim Pod. Oh, and we're on YouTube. Well, at Tales from the Outer Rim yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Spotify at Tales from the Outer Rim. We finally got the new logo up on Spotify. I don't know if you know. It only took if you knew that. <laughs> eight weeks. We're having major technical difficulties. <laughs> not on that one. No, I, mean, I don't know why it took so long to update. I think it's the Podbean thing. So no, I, I figured out how to put it on Spotify. Oh. <laughs> Like directly on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a there was a setting it was I was missing and oh, yeah, yeah, I blame oh, myself entirely it's... for all these technical difficulties. Um <laughs> All right, well glad glad our stuff's up there now at least. I it's mean. up. It's completely updated. Everything's all good. All good in the hood, Nikos. Just wait till we change the logo and in know, five days. In five um, days to switch it all back again. All right, I know what would cheer you up. We're going to talk about some Star Wars today. <laughs> it's not going to make me more upset. <laughs> no. All right. The first first thing on the agenda is um, the voice actress for Ahsoka Tano from well, Star Wars quick, The Clone Wars. Real quick. What? Let's, uh, well, today's show, we're going to be talking about, like, all in general. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about uh, Ashley Eckstein tells people to watch everything <laughs> before, before Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. We're also going to be going over the Rebels today, season one. Um, we watched it, so we're going to be recapping that whole thing. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the Acolytes. And, uh, I mean, it's going to have the most Jedi out of any show, movie, including the prequels, apparently. So um, stay tuned for that. But first, let's uh, let's definitely let's talk about this uh, Ashley Eckstein thing. Um, she did an interview with, uh, what, what, what uh, podcast was she on? Um, she was not on a podcast. It was... That was uh, Headland that was on a podcast. Correct. Um, I don't know where... Anyway, Ashley Eckstein, who played Ahsoka, she was talking a couple days ago, or maybe it was like a week ago, who knows, but she apparently told everybody that before you get to watch Ahsoka, you have to watch all of Clone Wars, watch Ahsoka. All of Rebels and watch Tales <laughs> well, from the Jedi. Yeah, I don't think that's what she was saying. It was uh, <laughs> it was an interview with Cinema Blend, um, uh, where she was basically just asked about um, like if if watching those shows would enhance Ahsoka, and she said absolutely it would. Like it would give obviously backstory on the character because she was introduced in Clone Wars, and you know her storylines were continued in. Um, Tales from the Jedi and in Rebels. Um, Don't so, lie to the people. She demanded that that you watch Star Wars. <laughs> <kidding. is> not true. <laughs> Ashley Eckstein would never demand anything. Yeah, I, I met her a couple times actually. She's, oh really? She yeah. seems like a very nice person. Ah, she is the nicest person ever. Um, like, but yeah, she literally she's just like, oh, absolutely, you know, absolutely. It would. She recommends everybody who's excited about Ahsoka to go watch Clone Wars and Rebels, which makes sense because literally if you just jump into Ahsoka without and, like seeing anything about the what? And Star Wars Tales from the Jedi. Yeah. I said that. <laughs> no, you said Star you said Clone Wars Rebels. I mentioned Tales of the Jedi and earlier. You gotta mention all three. <laughs> Tales of the Jedi, there's like an hour know, an hour's just, worth of content. It's overwhelming, um, just saying. No, it's not yeah, whatever. Anyway, it's it's it makes sense that she would say that because she's been voicing this character for years and yeah. you know if you're just jumping into Ahsoka without seeing those other projects you're just losing narrative value to the character you're not you're not getting the full meat and potatoes of Ahsoka Tano you're Listen, I'm sure she's gonna do a lot of badass stuff and be cool in Ahsoka but you, it it would help if you saw how she was trained as a Jedi and how her role in the rebellion and things like that. Um, I get it. Listen, I get it. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, I understand having to go and, you know, you're, there's a show called Ahsoka, right? But there's also, like, 
a bunch of other you know, lore that could help you uh, really understand this character in her own show, which I understand telling people to go watch these things to help build upon, um, to help make the show better for you as a watcher, right? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just nobody else who's actually, like, she's not in the show. I don't think she's in the show. Um, but nobody else in the show has came out and said you need to watch these other things to be uh, to even make yourself feel more comfortable watching Ahsoka, which like it's just a lot. I think to like the average viewer, um, and I think this is kind of the thing that Kathleen Kennedy. What, what, what did he get mad at when Kathleen Kennedy said you don't um, have to watch anything? Yeah, she, she was doing that interview with IGN, and she yeah. literally said she was touching on this. She was like, "We're trying to make content that's curated to the average audience, where you don't have to go and watch a million hours of content just to get the full story, which is like bullshit and like basically impossible to do yeah, with exactly. the Star Wars." So I understand your point here. It's like it's I think not it's hard to say what she said. But I think it's also like it's like the obvious thing that just isn't being said with the actual cast and crew. Because I feel like the cast and crew of like almost any show that's part of like a lineage of like big time, you know, um, IP will never say like, "Hey, go watch all these other things that I'm not in to acclimate yourself with the thing that I am in." Right. Like, it's just so much. So, but yeah. I understand, again, like, that there's, you should watch, like, Clone Wars. You should watch uh, Rebels. Like, at least, the, I think she's only in the first two seasons of Rebels. But you should watch these first two seasons of Rebels to really get a feel of where, She's like, in all of Rebels. She's in, no, I don't think she's in season three at all. Remember, she's dead. <laughs> Well, yeah, in she's three. in season four for sure. Yeah, that's she's, when at, she's at the end. Ezra finds her in the uh, yeah. She's at the world end between of world. four, and um, it ends with her at the beginning of a solo. Either way, like you know, I understand that, and I understand like her coming on say is it just like I feel that if I were just a what like say there was a giant Star Trek show like Picard, like let's say I was like excited about Picard. Obviously, there's like 18 seasons of like the next generation. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody from that show was like, "Hey, you need to go watch the next generation." I bet Star Trek fans were saying that. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what, as like the average normie watcher, you mm -hmm. know, it just seems kind of overwhelming to me. For when sure, I read that, it totally that, like, is that sort of thing. I don't. Not that I, again, it's not that I have a problem with it, but it's like it's interesting to see how somebody like her, who I guess you know, obviously promote the stuff that you're in understandable completely but i don't think that she was just this was just a selfless plug I, I honestly think that they probably you think that they brought her on set at all to be like hey this is what maybe ahsoka would do i mean i know that's like what dave is there for and like not like they do that for other voice actors the live action like hey not like rosario dawson <laughs> needs acting lessons mm -hmm. but especially from ashley x time but like you know i you have to think that maybe she got a sneak peek of this show right yeah, I you I know. think so. I mean, you know, she. I don't like. I I don't know. Like, what is your point here? Like, do you blame her for saying no, this? Or no, no. Like, I'm just saying. Like, maybe there's like more to this where it's like she's saying this sort of thing, but also because she maybe she knows something where it's like if you didn't. I don't know if this is a fear or not, but like I wouldn't mind if this show was just super like because you watched all this other stuff, it's going to mean that much more to you. Like, for us, we're going to watch this, and we're going to be like, damn, damn, you know, every two seconds, which I would really enjoy to have a series that, not that, I don't is that called, like, is that fan, um, not fanboying, but, like... Fan service? Yeah, is that too much fan service to have, like, aspects of a show be appreciated from, like, past things? No. Like, I don't. I don't really like that phrase because <laughs> I don't understand what it means because you see like like would that be like all right so let's say people call that fan service yeah. when they're like putting in a bunch of stuff from rebels which this, this is a bad example because Ahsoka is like existentially impossible without rebels it seems like because the main characters are the characters from rebels to anyway like I don't like using that word because people are like, well, that's just fan service. It's like, but no. it's stuff that people want to see. So, like, why would they not put it in? It's like we built up this whole relationship with somebody, and obviously, like, we know about it, but, like, it shouldn't fault us for, like, knowing 
and seeing things being hyped up because they added like a certain thing to like be, oh, this is for you. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I think that's I like that. Like, I understand it being like too much of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what I mean. Maybe she saw something in the show that provoked her to be like, hey, maybe this is going to be more for the hardcore fan. I don't know. Something just gives. I have this weird vibe about this show that just makes me feel like I think, Dave is like, "Hey, like this show is gonna be for the heart. This is gonna be such a hype train show mm-hmm. that like every week we're gonna be talking about like, oh, if you pause at this frame right here, you're gonna see in the background there was this thing that was in Clone Wars. You know, I almost have, which I don't mind honestly." Like, but I feel every single episode might be just so jam packed with certain things that like we're gonna be able to um, talk about stuff every single week. Like Mandalorian, yes, we were talking about things every single week. Mandalorian but, like, there's was a stale, man. But there's a <laughs> you know what I'm saying though. There is. A, I think there will be a difference too because just from the trailers alone, there's a lot of just Star Wars like stuff. Stuff. There's yeah. a lot of like world building and stuff that is pertinent to not just this time period but like also in the past with the world between world stuff so there is going to be a lot more stuff Easter jammed eggs. into Easter this eggs. show because Mandalorian was like a snooze fest man there yeah. was nothing happening when I look back on that show in season 3 I'm like what are the things what are the highlights when Zeb showed up and the Shadow Council scene. Right. <laughs> Those are the two highlights from the entire season that I can remember in, like, that dog fight from episode three. Right. Which was a horrible episode because right after that, the coolest part of, like, the first half of the season, it, the rest of it was just Dr. Pershing <laughs> doing just in rehab. <laughs> it, it is strange. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want it to be so set up, like... Um, how would I say it? Like you, you didn't. See what it. is your concern? Here, no, no, though? there's like, not. There's is your this concern is, that no concern. There's zero concern. There's here. zero concern. There's it zero. seems like there's some. Concern. No, no, no. There's zero <laughs> concern. I con- want these things. I want these things to be in there. You know what? Okay. There's not. There's not zero concern. <laughs> um, there, there, there is a uh, a fifteen uh, percent level of concern that the normie fan will turn this off because there are so many things that they will be questioning that they will not watch the rest of the show because maybe it's overload of just so many things that we as fans for over whatever since 2007 of this clone of Ahsoka being alive like that they will be questioning so many things that they won't understand it and so your like, concern is for the normie fan my concern is that because the normies are partially the people that watch this show, right? Mm-hmm. And the people who review this show are are more likely than not just normies. And they look at these... Disney Plus as a whole is a failing app. Like, these streaming services are failing. They need these things to draw in numbers like what The Last of Us did, what House of the Dragon did. They need mm-hmm. those top-tier numbers. And if the normie fan isn't tuning into this, you know how likely it is that Dave Filoni's movie doesn't get greenlit then? That would suck. So yeah. that's my concern that this show will be so, like, fanboyish. I don't know what will draw in those fans, though, because Andor was supposed to. And they yeah. gave Andor, like, a quarter of a billion dollar budget and it didn't really move the needle much no. as far as I know for the Disney Plus it didn't. app. It was one of the so most I don't, watched shows. On so it. I don't know yeah. what I would try if I was them either. Like th- This, this it's the type of hype things that every single week that like people will be like, oh my god, did you see this? And that's mm-hmm. like, it's good because I like that sort of thing. Um, it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things. It's not, it's not a really big concern for us because I think for content-wise. I mean, I think for us, it's going to be, be great. fantastic yes. because we're getting Rebels Season 5 in live action. Yeah. That's, uh, I hope, like that's what we're getting. Like, Basically, yeah, it should be. It should be, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be cautiously optimistic yeah. about this show because I, we've been fooled twice. Obi-Wan wow. and Boba Fett looked fantastic from the promotional mm-hmm. and trailers stuff, and they sucked. Like, Boba Fett was completely marketed as, like, this is going to be a different type of Star don't, Wars. Don't even get me fucking started with the budget that those two shows got and the mm-hmm. fucking budget that Andor got. Mm-hmm. Like, 
Andor was good though. What the fuck? I mean, <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. At right. no, you, I mean, I'm, I, no, no, I'm going to get started. How no, are they going to no, give? No, 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 how no. are they going to give to 220 Reel million in. dollars to Andor? Not going to give money to o- 95 million dollars to Obi Wan. Should have never, like, never been made. Like, oh, it's so dumb. But you know what? Boba Fett should have been made, and it was made, and it was made yeah, terribly. It was made terribly. <laughs> that should have been. That should have gotten the like the PG thirteen. This turned to 11 that Andor did. Bro, they used $35 million on the Vespa scenes. That's absurd because I could shoot those scenes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. The last episode, I think, was worth about $15 million. For him, it was all CG, yes, horrible yes, CGI, yes, Rancor. Yes. It's so idiotic. Stuff, it's, which was not cool oh at all. Oh my God. <laughs> it's just so idiotic. Yes. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean, you know, like, that show like, should have been the Star Wars version of Sopranos. It should have been given the same given the same amount of love as Sopranos, and it should have been given the same amount of budget that Andor gave was given. Yeah. And like, I mean, like, I mean, this is going to be a this is going to be a transition, but like the same like love and I think appreciation that Dave Filoni gave to like Star Wars Rebels and gave to, like, the Clone Wars characters in Star Wars Rebels. Mm -hmm. Like, I really hope that he brings that same energy, and and I hope there is no studio interference when it comes to Ahsoka, that he's able to just, you know, give give the same amount of love, like I'm saying, to Ahsoka that he brought to every single animated series that he's, you know, brought to life, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I hope that. Now, in saying, like, all this sort of thing, um, we're going to move on to uh, our Star Wars Rebels Season 1 recap. We were going to do this every single week leading up to Ahsoka. So we still got three more seasons, but let's start off where it all begins. Season 1, um, I guess just right off the bat, uh, how, how do you like Season 1? Where do you fit Season 1 in um, your tier list of like um, 1 through 4? Season one's probably the weakest. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's and there's it doesn't mean it's bad. No. It's it's weak in the sense of like the show just didn't hit its stride yet. I don't think um, there's still a lot to like about season one. Uh, like the, the it was had a good villain, voiced mm-hmm. by Jason Isaacs, who was like the quintessential villain. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so the Inquisitor was a great villain. Um, Obviously, it's like just getting the ball rolling, getting the characters together, and like establishing their dynamics. So it's the weakest only because it's just getting the ball rolling, I think. Yeah. Like, I think season one Rebels, while it's the weakest, I also feel like it's one of the most fun seasons. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's one of the most free flowing type of um, shows that it's able to. Uh, not only keep people involved like week to week because it is a series where no, I don't really feel like you could just turn on any episode and yeah. like because it's a continuation, right? Like it's like week by and week, you need to know what's going on. Yeah, that's like kind of the difference between Rebels and Clone Wars because Clone Wars is almost an anthology show. Yeah, because it it's, it's it's it's. Each episode is out of like the timeline. Order. It's out of order, so you can like jump into any given arc of the Clone Wars and know what's going on. Rebels is, and I think this is like a strength of Rebels. It's a continuous story throughout, yes. and linear, which is cool. Which like, which I like, but in like also like in saying with how every week to week episode happens, it's like there's a lot of fun things that go on in between, but because they. The Dave Filoni gave it that ability because it was so drawn on by legacy characters. Like the first opening scene of Rebels is with Vader talking. Not to mention they brought back James Earl Jones voices Vader mm-hmm. in this, which is amazing, right? Um, you also get Yoda voiced by the old Yoda actor, which is awesome. Frank Oz. Yeah, like which is like dope as fuck, right? It's not just the guy who was uh, playing him in uh, Clone Wars. Um, but he's good too. Yeah, don't get me wrong. He's awesome. But OG's OG, right? Yeah. So you get that. It's just a lot of cool things that are drawn upon by characters that we are already established. It's good and bad for me, right? Because you get, 
you learn about who. Um, don't forget Ed, about Lando. <laughs> oh yeah, Lando isn't isn't <laughs> um, isn't Leia in this too, right? Uh, not in season one. She's in season two. Lando's in season one. In one episode, he just like yeah. swindles and like makes Ezra and hey. Kanan jealous because <laughs> want to play some sabak. Because <laughs> Hera and Sabine are like, oh my god, Lando is cool. <laughs> yeah, well, she is cool. <laughs> Lando. Lando is cool. He gyps them out of like a bunch of money and stuff. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does do a bunch of Lando shit. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It is good. Uh, but yeah, the the thing is with this season though is like. They don't really go so much into the the backstories of each individual character because they do that a lot later on in in each individual mm. seasons. But this season was very crutch with like people that you know continuing off of some Clone War storylines and basically like you know giving you the run of the mill like oh reluctant teacher. Uh, student who is like oh i don't want to do this but ends up becoming like they the like, best friends right? i think the cool part about their dynamic kanan and ezra is like they grow together because kanan was disconnected from the jedi way of life for so long yeah. and he there's even one line i think it's in uh the one where they go to the temple where he's like ezra's like what does that mean he's like you know, I don't really know, but oh, yeah, this is like, what my master told me. <laughs> you will learn everything and nothing all at once. Yeah, and then what he says mean? later, he's yeah. like, I'm I'm learning about like what my master taught me more so now that I'm teaching it to you. And I'm like, yeah. this is kind of cool. You know, they like learn oh, together. And, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I, I think um, I can appreciate this season um, a lot more because I, Rebel, to just put it frankly, Rebels is uh, one of, if not my favorite, Star Wars things, like in the entire entire series, movies involved. Like mm-hmm. I love Star Wars Rebels, so I can sit back and I can watch any of these episodes, and I really like seasons one through three, and I usually stop watching Rebels after Kanan dies. I'm like, nothing bad happens. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like Kanan dies, and I stop watching because I'm sad. Yeah, it is <laughs> but super. Sad. I love watching. You don't like watching them. Hera. <laughs> Uh, morning in that, oh in, my that God. in that episode oh afterward. Oh my God, it's so sad for and like She's like poor... clutching, clutching that uh, like uh, Twi'lek artifact that Bro, Kanan got her. get there for four straight episodes. It's you know, just straight sadness, dude. You know the part that gets me the most is when they first get back and Hera's just like walking like very like limp because she's, oh, yeah, you know, and, and then does, Chopper yeah. like rolls over and like holds her hand. Oh my God, it's so sad, man. Because Chopper's so... such an asshole like all the time, but he... Deep down, it's they show a lot of emotion with Chopper, yeah, which is dude. pretty cool. Like R two, they take R two and like make make him like I don't know. You Chop, know what I'm saying? Chopper's, Chopper's a superior. Chopper's kind of better than R two. <laughs> dude, Chopper is the superior droid. Yeah. I will say it. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Chopper I, is superior. That is that's based. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, you know, I love this series because of how fun it is in the beginning. I mean, it's just so goofy too, right? Like, it's so fun. Like the yeah. first, the first like um, couple episodes, it's just so it's so Disney, right? Mm-hmm. It's so. Like the way that their face looks, like uh, we laughed at the part where it's like Empire Day. This my fa- one of my favorite episodes too. Um, but it's like Empire Day, and they're talking, and they have to distract the stormtroopers, and like uh, Kanan almost gets caught, but he's like, oh, "I love Empire Day. Yeah, Empire Day." Just acting, just acting, acting like, like a hillbilly. Yeah, and it's <laughs> just woo, Empire Day, woo. <laughs> and then Ezra's like, "Oh, don't worry, my dad's just." Just a little he's drunk. Real patriotic. He just loves the empire. And he's like, "Oh, the empire!" And they're like, "Move along, move along." <laughs> like, it's just so goofy. And there's so many parts where you could just pause and laugh at the guys, like their reaction to certain things. Um, but it's a like, it's a great first season to a show that mm-hmm. had like, at the time was given shit expectations, was giving a shit time slot, was giving a shit budget. The show definitely... It was set up to fail. The show has grown in popularity since it's come off the air, I think. Even among Star Wars fans, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, Like, I feel like a lot of Star Wars fans were 
not watching this show no. when it was airing and kind of shitting on it for a while until they well, actually it, like dude. watch it. I, I was I would admit I didn't watch the show until like 2021. And I watched it every single day Thursday, <laughs> Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> I watched every single episode. But I, no, you got to think of it this way: when it came out, I think it came out 2014, right? Um, it was two years after the Clone Wars got canceled. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did the. Disney was immediately like, "All right, we're not going to have this really successful thing that we didn't make on on our on our flagship flagship station. So we're going to cancel that. We're going to give this show to Dave Filoni, who made that successful show, but we're going to cut the budget in almost half. And then they gave it like Thursday nights on at like 7:30 p.m. is like dead zone time for at least back then for um, like a live TV show that wasn't like." Uh, goes to a streaming service or anything. Mm-hmm. It was just dead zone. So this this show started off at with some of, and then the promotion budget for it too was nil. <laughs> like mm-hmm. there was almost no promotion going on for this show. So the fact that it even survived <laughs> after season one, like it's impressive. Disney's like maybe people will watch this, but and they know it. Maybe and, we could fire Filoni after this. But the thing is, people did watch it, and yeah. it did become a thing. And after season two, you could see that the animation like did get a lot better in season two, season three, and even in season four while they were ending it. Like they definitely got that boost from the Force Awakens money in <laughs> and, and season four. But um, but yeah, like this show had a lot going against it, and. Like it just looks so cartoony and looks so like weirdly animated after watching the high quality, I feel high quality of the Clone Wars. Like it turned off a lot of people. And like I just remember everybody shitting on the lightsabers being yeah, so skinny. I'm like Yeah, it doesn't really affect me. But there but <laughs> people had a lot of problems with the animation. Yeah. But either way, like that's like that's just a part of like of this journey. Cause like it it almost fits in with how the show's characters are. Like, mm. they have the, like, scratch and battle for almost every single thing that they have, right? It's very blue-collar. Dude, it is. Yeah. It is. Like, every single person that's on Phoenix Squadron, like, had had to fight to even get to yeah. where they're at. It's charming. Right when we meet them. It's very charming. Yeah. And I like how they expand upon it a little bit. Like, uh, with Hera and Bad Batch, you yeah. see, like, Hera's upbringing and how she's struggling with her parents being like these badass freedom fighters and she's just like I want to go pilot in the stars and then right. you see her later she's just she's a pilot and she's a badass pilot too she's the leader of nope. the rebels in this show um yeah season 1 has a lot to like don't get me wrong uh, i think the strongest episode is probably the last one um yeah the finale is great um I don't know, the Inquisitor dies in this episode. He dies in season one. He, he's a one and done villain, which is kind of interesting. Um, this show, this show, uh, like with that, this show definitely has something that I feel like a lot of shows are missing nowadays, which is like consequences that matter throughout each season. The season, especially in like animated animation, mm-hmm. like um, Ezra gets like slashed in episode like. I think eleven when they're when they're inside when the Kanan and Ezra are fighting off the Grand Inquisitor when Ezra goes almost full dark side mode and brings up that giant animal thing, mm-hmm. like he gets slashed in the face and he has that scar for the rest of the series. That's cool. Like, um, and then even the next. I mean, obviously the biggest thing is Kanan gets blinded, right? I mean, I don't like, think that happens. In no, this I mean not season, season one. It happens in like season three. But I mean, he gets blinded and he's blind for a whole season yeah i mean season two it happens he's let's be real like they play it fast and loose with kanan's blindness he's like basically not blind but you get what i'm saying yeah i do yeah it is cool um so yeah the inquisitor dies in season one we also find out so throughout the first season they're getting like they're just like a one ship full of rebels in season one and you know the characters are questioning like are we the only rebels and Hera the leader knows that they're not and she's getting like information from some unknown person called Fulcrum Fulcrum. and at the end of the season you find out Fulcrum is Ahsoka which is really cool Uh, Mm -hmm. they like they make contact with Ahsoka and Bail Organa so I like that because 
I'm very interested, and this is why I like Andor too, and I think this is why Andor Season 2 might be really good, is the formation of the Rebellion is going to be fun to watch in that show. Yeah. Because none of them know about each other until Bay Organa and people like him and uh, who's the uh, senator lady, um, Mon Mothma mm-hmm. and Ahsoka, people like who uh, are like pulling the strings of this, bring them all together. I want to see that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's especially, um, it's kind of interesting, too, because Kanan was kind of, Kanan is and against the Rebellion. Mm. Yeah, it's not, initially. I wouldn't say that he's against it, but I think he, he just like, wants it to be them. He's apprehensive to, like, get involved in an organized thing, yeah. I think, just because he probably has major PTSD from the yeah. from the Jedi dying. <laughs> um, He's against like, committed relationships. Yeah. <laughs> well, Understandably against committed, committed relationships. relationships with organizations, at least. <laughs> he's against the unions. <laughs> yeah. Kane and anti-unions. He's, he's just a, uh, he's a, he's a free baller. He likes, he likes <laughs> his freedom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it is it is interesting to see. Um, I mean, I don't really think that. She, I mean, she was ultimately hiding um, from or hiding this information from the rest of the group that she was like, uh, who, what the ultimate goal of this whole thing was. Like, they mm-hmm. knew that they were helping people, and that was their thing. Yeah, they just didn't but know like didn't know how organized extent. it was, and if yeah. like how many other rebels there were, which makes sense. You know, Hera explains it in the show. She's like, if one of us got captured, like we can't like have one of us like spilling the beans to the empire where all the other rebels are. So right. it makes sense. Um, I think that's a really cool, like an underrated aspect too of like what the first season shows of them like choosing a planet mm-hmm. and then going in there because they know that this is the this planet's going to be the home ground for like TIE fighter building they know it's going to be a uh, docking station for supplies for the Empire mm-hmm. so they were specifically put on Lothal to stop these individual things from happening and like you know that's I don't really think that's talked about a lot because like it's not like something that needs to be super in depth this like but i think it's worth bringing up because i feel like it's overlooked mm-hmm. what their original plan for being there was so yeah cuz they do just kind of show up there and see in the first episode and Ezra like bumps his way into being in their group basically he like tries to steal he their Aladdin, shit he Aladdins them yeah basically <laughs> the first episode and then they just yeah they don't Once really like elaborate too much they just stay there <laughs> they're like I don't know, guess guess we'll chill but I think that the, it, that's the, the that's what the um they ended up that was like a it's a retcon in season two mm-hmm. where they end up describing oh no we were gonna be there forever well um, yeah because they got a move the story along yeah <laughs> uh, but but yeah i mean my well let's just go oh, i know you mentioned your what what's your favorite episode of this of this season like the last one for you yeah i think so um a lot of good stuff happens like i said the inquisitor dies ahsoka shows up um the final scene is tarkin calling in vader to uh deal with the rebels so that was a good it has a good cliffhanger too uh tarkin's another good you know he's like yeah. a Behind the this, B, behind B the villain. scenes, like he's the main villain, but not on the, not boots on the ground villain. Yeah, um, and he's always great. Yeah, um, um, so my favorite episode was uh, Path of the Jedi, episode ten, where Kanan and Ezra have to go into this Jedi temple and they have to work together, and mm-hmm. it's it's where Ezra finds his Kyber crystal to build his first lightsaber, which we get to see yeah. his first made lightsaber at the end of the episode. His Glock, um, man, you should have got should have got the lightsaber that that we got um, that I found in um, Goodwill. I found two. Coming to I, work on Monday, and Likos hands me an Ezra lightsaber. <laughs> dude, I found two lights, two Ezra lightsabers that's that you could shoot out like Nerf bullets out of the front of it. It's just awesome. He didn't bring any Nerf bullets. So. It's I know there was no Nerf, <laughs> but it's a Glock, dude. That thing is a Glock. I will give Ezra the most props. Where he was like, "I've seen too many of these fights, man. I know, I know what wins a knife battle." Oh, God. <laughs> said, I do like the part when Kane's uh, Kane's like, "I can't do that." <laughs> Mine's just better. <laughs> Says something like that. It's so cool. Uh, but in that episode, Ezra obviously finds his Kyber crystal, but 
he has to go on his own like spiritual adventure to like find himself. Yoda helps out. Yeah, my favorite part about that is Yoda. Um, he's he like he presents himself to Ezra in the same way Qui Gon does to yeah. Yoda in the end of the Clone Wars when he's learning how to become a Force Ghost, which is cool. It's like this bunch of like butterfly type lights right. that talk, <laughs> and Ezra doesn't know who Yoda is, obviously. So that's. Also pretty cool. He just thinks he's the force. Yeah, he's like, who's this fucking person? <laughs> yeah. So I really like that. I also really like Kanan's aspect, too, where he's not necessarily, like, going and, like, lost in the same caves. Like, literally lost the same way that Ezra is. Mm-hmm. But he still ends up, like, needing to find his way. And they end up finding each other at the end. And it's, like, really interesting how Yoda puts him on the right path of being like, you know, just because someone stumbles and loses their way doesn't mean that they're lost forever sort of thing. What's Um, uh, interesting is Ezra kind of always walks the line between the light side and the dark side. And that's, that's, that's prevalent from the beginning. Even in this episode, when Yoda's talking to him, he's like, why do you want to become a Jedi? He's like, I just want to just, fight everybody that's trying to beat me up and he's like "Mm, revenge you want huh he's like no (laughs) it's like well what (laughs) i think that also kind of shows growth from yoda's point of view too of like like, hearing hearing these things i don't want to fuck this up again (laughs) yeah right i mean obviously he fucked it up with anakin but i think it shows like a little bit of like growth on his aspect to like hear somebody out too right and not just a hundred not just straight up be like no, you're wrong. <laughs> like it's like you know what I'm saying. So it is interesting aspect to see the growth from all angles in a way. Even though Yoda is the voice of reason here, he's also like showing in his own way too that he's growing in the Force and has grown with um, the times. He's got with the times, old man. <laughs> so I really like that, and I really like I really like Yoda's presence continuous presence in this show and how they show him as ultimately a, a grand master. Yeah, he pops up every once in a while, which is cool. Like, I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of it for season one of Rebels. I mean, it, it ends, like you said, with Inquisitor dying, uh, Fulcrum, Ahsoka, and then they move into the next season, um, and we're going to review that next week. Or, yeah, next week. And I think season two is... One Strong. of one of my favorite seasons. It gives you backstory. You get, we'll talk about it all next There's week. A lot but, of good reunions. Oh, man, season two of Rebels. Yeah, I also hard. have like a nostalgic thing with with season two of Rebels that came out like during like a. Uh, I was just about to um, start like this new job that was going on, and it was like it came out in like Christmas, I think, during like, it was like Christmas or January, whenever the show came out. Um, and it was just such a good time watching that show week to week and just being excited for some Star Wars stuff. And like, I had just graduated high school. It was, uh, it was oh, good times, good yeah. times. Fall and winter of 2015 oh, and 16. The best of times and the worst of times. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, we're going to be talking about that next week. Um, what would you, out of 10, what would you rank uh, season one of Rebels? Probably like an eight. Okay, I get that. Solid eight. Yeah, I get. I think it's seven point like, eight, something like that. Like seven point eight. high sevens. Okay, so not eight. <laughs> seven point eight. Well, leave wiggle room for the other seasons. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think it all be ten out of tens. Nah, somebody. This is definitely not ten out of um, ten. Yeah, I mean, I give this season like uh, I give it like an eight point five. I'm super biased about the show, so all my rankings are going to be kind of high for this show. But like subjectively, like it's like a seven out of ten. Like my own rank wise, or it's like I'm just whatever. It's it's like a eight point five for me out of this. So um, next week we'll be talking about season two of Star Wars Rebels as we get closer to Ahsoka. We we are almost exactly a month from Ahsoka coming out. So it's very exciting. We're on the right around the corner for some from new Star Wars oh content. Oh God, yes, Star Wars content. yes. Oh, it's gonna be so exciting. And I after wait. that, I think this is the next one. After that is the Acolyte. Um, we should do live reactions of Ahsoka. Yeah, I'm done. I think that'd be fun. We should watch um, it, like, I mean, the next day we just record. Watch. Anyway, we'll talk about that after. But, yeah, maybe maybe you'll begin some live action of, of live reactions for Ahsoka. So the next thing on the agenda is more news about the Acolyte. And 
I got to say, everything that's coming out about this show, I'm liking. Again, I'm cautiously optimistic about this one, too, just because we've been fooled many times. Mandalorian Season 3 looked good, but it sucked. Um, but Mid. there's promising news coming out about the Acolyte all the time. Um, apparently, this show will have more Jedi than any other Star Wars project. I don't know exactly what this means. I don't know if this is like there'll be more Star Wars characters in it than anything else. If that's true, or more Jedi characters in it than anything else. If that's true, there would need to be more Jedi than there are in the Clone Wars, which I think is the most that we get to like that have talking parts. Yeah. I don't know what this means exactly. Um, So just to like compare though, like I looked up. The most Jedi I've ever seen on screen was the Battle of Geonosis and Attack of uh, Attack of the Clones, right. Episode Two, and there were thirty that were seen on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently, at that battle, there were two hundred and twelve, which is absurd. Like, how did that many Jedi lose to? And only <laughs> just thirty droids. survived. Thirty. Jedi survived yeah. the Battle of Geonosis. Apparently, like... there was a bunch of people in the sky. The ships were going, ships were blowing up. They that... just bring all the Jedi that suck. Like, I don't what? know what is up with that. I mean, think of it this way: there were ten thousand Jedi during this time, right? Yeah. So, I mean, some of them had to suck. Some of them were on the B team, C team. There was obviously an, a fucking Z team, like yeah, a Z they... team that was like. Just a bunch of terrible. Padawans. <laughs> just a terrible massacre yeah. of just they human got killed life. By droids. Like, like two hundred and uh, almost two hundred people died during Genosis. I mean, I know this doesn't have to do with how many Jedi are gonna be on screen, because they say the Acolyte's gonna have the most Jedi out of any Star Wars movie or show. Now, this show might be what, like eight to ten episodes, right? Assuming, let's just assume. Um but, I mean, how many Jedi are you going to fucking have? Says, here's the direct quote from the showrunner. She says, quote, it's almost flipped. We have more Jedi than you've seen in any of the Star Wars content. But at the same time, I think you will you see more morally ambiguous characters than you've ever seen in Star Wars, which sounds cool, too. Um but more Jedi than you've seen in any other Star Wars con- What? I mean, it just seems very like... I mean, the show is the Acolyte, so it's supposed to be a Sith show. Mm, right? I Okay, I, I'm... Yeah, this is... I think what might happen here is, like, there could be a storyline where the Sith are, like, infiltrating the Jedi Temple. Because we're clearly going to get a lot of Jedi Temple stuff if it's yeah. going to be the most Jedi we've ever seen. I'm assuming a lot of this is going to take place on Coruscant and the Sith just being in the background. Like, they are in, uh, like, Phantom Menace. At the beginning of Phantom Menace in canon, Darth Plagueis, Maul, and Sidious are alive yeah. and on Coruscant. So maybe it's just, like... That sect of the Sith moving down, you know, they've just been on Coruscant, and this shows you how that plan started on Coruscant, maybe. Um, hopefully we get, like, Plagueis' master in this, or Plagueis his master's himself. master. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know, like, what the... Um, I mean, if Yoda was around for 900 years, it's not hard to believe that maybe Plagueis was, yeah, maybe I was just 200, 300 years yeah, old. Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know what the... Uh, the lifespan of his species is that would be interesting or maybe if even if he's not in it or not a sith yet maybe he became a sith later in life or something like that you know yeah well they didn't they well his species i mean obviously we, we don't know if plagueis is even going to be in the show but his species was like part of the banking clan i think yeah the was. um I don't the, know. the Munes. And most of them are like politicians anyway so it's going to be so interesting to be- see maybe he how he lines up himself the same way that uh, Darth Sidious does in the political games yeah. and how he, you know. I think his backstory, just from doing, like, research, like, a while ago, is he, he comes from a rich family, too, and uh, his they were, like, rich, and he is very was very involved in, like, Coruscant politics and um, specifically giving them economic relief. Okay. Because... Um, the banking clan, you know, yes. the Munes are very much in the involved with the banking clan and stuff. Yeah, so there you go. So I mean, maybe that's we see that the string being attached for when Sidious just goes and offs him 
it's like just a very easy transition for him to just slide in there after being taught for so many years. All about, right. So yeah. if we're going off of Wikipedia, okay, that's legends. Um, apparently he was born sometime around when the show happened. So this show is happening 100 years before Phantom Menace. So that'd be around 132 BBY. It says Plagueis was born between 147 and 120 BBY. So he might not even be born yet. Mm. Um, so that's why I like the idea of his master or his master's master. Like It's further down the line and further in canon that we've ever seen before. Because um, Plagueis is the furthest, right? Um, Knights of the Old Republic is not canon. Listen, I'd love to see Hugo show up, man. Hugo? That's his name. Who's that? That's Darth Plagueis' his name. Hugo? Hugo. Hey-go. Oh, he go. Hey go. Hey go. <laughs> Hugo. Hugo. Darth. My guy. <laughs> Play me oh, hot man. Your time is come to an end, Hugo. <laughs> I want him just to have like a <laughs> just I just everything ends up being the Sopranos for me, so I just want him to be like a Italian dude. It's just oh I'm part of the dark side now. Oh hey. Oh, oh. he's Jedi. Oh, They're you guys crazy. want some money? <laughs> oh, who is this this guy is apparently his master Darth Tenebrous. Oh yeah, he's, he's like he's one of the Cantina guys. <laughs> he's like the weird the weird tentacle things too. No, I think that's his his master has like the weird um tentacles or something like that that like comes out of his mouth. He looks like a basically Squidward. Nice. Just Darth he Looks Squidward. like the arbiter. <laughs> yeah, he does, right. <laughs> uh so yeah, I mean, I don't really understand what she's saying when it comes to the most Jedi on screen cuz again, we saw 30 in Attack of the Clones, maybe just a more deeper look at how they train and blah, 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 blah. Sounds um, it's intriguing. Not, yeah, it's not, I'm not against it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against that at all. But I almost would rather have heard her say this is the most Sith <laughs> we're going to see on screen. Yeah. Because, like, I want to see more of the Sith. I want to see more of that. I than, wonder if we'll see a connection between the characters in the Acolyte and Ray Stevenson's character. And so that'd be fun. Like that uh, not Sith type of yeah. sect that we got going on in Ahsoka. Um, I mean, we'll obviously learn more about that. The other, the other cool thing is I wrote about this a couple days ago. Uh, what the showrunner also confirmed is that there'll be a Wookiee Jedi in the Acolyte. Um, the first live action Wookiee Jedi, which was like a weird pet peeve of George Lucas's, I guess he mm-hmm. didn't want any live action Wookiee Jedi because of. I don't know the uh, <laughs> the 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 unconfirmed source that I read is because of the deba- quote debacle after the Star Wars Christmas special. Oh yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, I've never yeah. even seen the Star Wars Christmas special. You haven't? No. Oh my god, they're so bad. They're so, so bad. I don't know. There's, Was there's he a, just like fed up with Wookies yeah, after that or yeah, something? Yeah, it's just so bad, dude. It is. It it's acted so terribly, mm-hmm. and it's just like it's just a nuisance. Just yeah. Like I, I I feel like it's just a nuisance. But I think my my head canon with it is it's the same reason why they didn't want your old poof being in uh, Attack of the Clones to confuse people mm-hmm. with like, I don't know why, but George Lucas thought the audiences were just extremely stupid well, and also, that we couldn't like... determine who's who. Like if somebody sees another Wookiee on screen, yeah. they're like, that's Chewbacca. <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's a lot of them. <laughs> like granted, there was no Chewbacca in the prequels so like no there was I mean I know at the end but like you know when for the most part so introducing like a mm. Wookiee in the earlier prequels yeah, that's the weird might, part might have been confusing for people the weird part is like then he decides to go to Kashyyyk and <laughs> yeah, Revenge of the Sith so it's like yeah. I don't know it's like a weird weird yeah. thing I don't know how true this know. pet peeve thing is but I doubt it's, it's even real there has been no live action Wookiee Jedi before so it's kind of we're going to have a brand new thing of like a history historical star wars thing happening in the acolyte which is and cool wookies live a long fucking time too yeah. right like how yeah. what's their average lifespan um, like i think it's like three years i think it is like 300 years um like I mean, chewbacca is like 200 in the original trilogy i believe yeah um but what's cool is like we also got the name of this character in this interview with the dagobah dispatch um headland the showrunner for the acolyte said that the char- the guy who plays Ch- um, Chewie in the Solo movie is going to be playing this character. Kelnaka, his name is. I love that guy. Um, 
so Kalnaka. The other detail we got is that has, the side of one one of the sides of his head is shaved. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's just something else What's she mentioned. Je- What's the Wookiee Jedi's name? Kel Naka. Kel Naka. Okay. Yeah. That's so, cool. it's not one of the ones from uh, Legends. There, okay. I read a bunch of comments where people were like, is it going to be these? I yeah, forgot how I to say know. their names. I don't remember But it's names. not either of them. So, maybe they'll draw elements from those characters because she did mention them in the interview. But I mean, there's only so much you can take when they, when they literally don't speak uh, uh, English. What, you know, physical attributes, whatever. Anything. Oh, I know, but like, you know what I'm saying? It's like I don't. I want to temper expectations here. I don't. Like, you imagine the Swiggy starts speaking English? <laughs> That'd be funny. How odd would that look? Be, would that be odd? It'd be looking? just as weird as Han Solo speaking uh, Wookie in Solo. Oh my god! You imagine this Wookie just like, hey. <laughs> 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 It's literally like what just can, like a Bigfoot talking to you. Like what kind of voice would you give a look? It reminds me of those uh, like those beef jerky commercials. Oh with my the Bigfoot god! In them. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, I'm just like you. No, no, the like, Geico commercial with with the oh, caveman. Oh, the caveman. Yeah. Like, oh, I am smarter than this. <laughs> hey, there's, a, there's a Sith over there. <laughs> I just, I'm telling you, all my characters in my head just end up being Italian. It's just Sil. <laughs> as, as a Wookiee just being like, hey, what's going on here? What do you mean? Gosh. Why? What do you mean? What do we got to go do? <laughs> That's what he calls Yoda. Why? Why? <laughs> hey, what do we, I don't know. But uh, what do you think Yoda or a, a Wookiee should a Wookie sound talking like? <laughs> what like voice a voice and vocal. Like a New Jersey mobster. <laughs> I almost feel like a, a Swedish accent would go very good with, like, a Wookiee. You know, the guy who plays him is Swedish, I think. Oh, so there you go. That would be um, just an inch nice how, how they say things. It's very Their cadence is very, like, soft, but also it would be interesting. Because most of the Wookiees, they, yeah, they yell, but that's just because they need to, how their conversations go. Like, <laughs> so I'd be like, who'd win? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so the only other Wookiee Jedi we've seen was in the Clone Wars um, and Bad Batch, Gunji. Um, Is it Goonji or Gunji? I, think it, I don't know. I call him Goonji. The gun. The Goonj. Um So, yeah, in Bad Batch, we, we saw that he survived Order 66, right? Um, and I guess, so the other thing in that not confirmed article that I was reading about the George Lucas pet peeve okay. is um, the reason that Gunji was in Clone Wars is because Dave Filoni's plans for Gunji, because Dave Filoni created the character, uh, his plans for Gunji uh, changed George Lucas's mind about there not being any Wookiee Jedi. So that intrigues me because we've seen Gunji in a Star Wars project this year. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was this year that we saw him in Bad Batch. So that gives me hope that this character will show up in his Filoni verse like movie or something. That's yeah. That's, what if he's in Ahsoka? That'd be awesome. <laughs> like <laughs> honestly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The hype train for the types of levels that could happen with Ahsoka, like we can get anything. Mm-hmm. Like we can get Gunji shows up like episode two and is like, I'm here to help with Ahsoka, bro. Or like, yeah, like, whatever. I'm sure they'll write it better than that. But <laughs> <laughs> he just a portal opens up and, and Gunji, Gunji yeah, steps no, out. End game style. Gunji comes out with Cal Kestis. Yep, Cal dog face. <laughs> You're all poof. He's yeah. there, maybe. Yeah. Um Yaddle. as much as as much as I what my plan or what Dave Floney's plan should be is like them like finding Luke and like start like helping with the new Jedi uh, council and like training the new Jedi. Yeah, I don't that'd know. Be cool. That would be cool because we've already seen Luke rebuilding his Jedi order in the Mandalorian. Um even though he lost his only fucking student. <laughs> And took his lightsaber away for some yeah, reason. Yeah, idiot. Um, Sent him on a fucking bus home. Yeah, that was weird. Um, <laughs> hopefully you we had enough training. Hopefully we get something where Gunji and other Jedi are that we've seen before are like finding Luke and signing up to be teachers at the new Hogwarts. <laughs> Can I? This is has this has to do with Rebels and has to do with the Ahsoka show, and maybe even this. Mm-hmm. Like my theory for the Ahsoka show is that. I think Ezra is going to be cloned. I think Ezra is going to end up being a bad. Like, there's going to be a clone Ezra that's bad. Mm-hmm. Essentially, the same thing that they do it's in like Legends. It's like Star Killer. 
yes, but also the same thing that they do in Legends with um, the Mount Tantus thing, because we've seen Mount Tantus yeah. in Legends are in canon now a couple of times, just in animation so far. Mm-hmm. But I think there's a possibility that we maybe see what they do when uh, Luke gets um, cloned, and it's Luke in can in Legends, mm-hmm. but we see it with Ezra, and it has to be Ahsoka and Sabine fighting this dark clone of Ezra, and once they do that, then they find Ezra, and then he gets recruited into maybe being a Jedi Master with at this school. How cool would that be to see I love that. Ezra being a Jedi Master, but also being able to see a fully fledged out dark side version mm-hmm. of Ezra as well. Yeah, I would love that, because um, that would also follow up on the cloning stuff from the Bad Batch, Yeah, and they never say it out loud, but presumably what that work is supposed to be doing is cloning for sensitive. That's the cloning shit that's going on in the Mandalorian that they've been yeah. that they've been saying. You're right. Like there's a bunch of cloning aspects that's leading up to a force sensitive Snoke um, being made. Mm-hmm. Like Oh, Snoke is Ezra confirmed. I mean that's been that's been the the root, not the rumor. That's maybe been he's like, just like a Frankenstein. Maybe that's what Snoke is. He's a Frankenstein of like all these people's different DNA, like Ezra, Palpatine, Crosshair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, but oh, well, you didn't maybe. know Snoke goes hunting in his uh, free time. He goes uh, hunting for nerfs in his in his um, gold cloak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, God. he wears exactly that that bathrobe just, when he's out in the wild hunting nerfs. Yeah, and making nerf nuggets nerf later. Nuggets and nerf jerky. Your goddamn nerf herder. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I think that would be cool to possibly see that happening with, with I do too. Ezra. Um, and I am craving to see that where uh, you see like Luke assembling a new Jedi Council because that would be a perfect time for, to assemble all these Jedi. Bro, that's hype. That's yeah, hype. That's, that's hype as fuck. That's the hype shit that I'm saying. Like, so just mm-hmm. be. I imagine. I don't want to hope. At the end of Ahsoka, she goes back to the temple, and Gunji and Dogface <laughs> Dog and face Ezra are, are there helping job. teach Luke. And Dinosaur Man. No, Dogface is alive though, bro. Dogface is not alive, dude. They're, they're not, they're not going to show oh, us Dogface. How face. much do you want to bet? I'll bet you. At some point, not in this show maybe, but oh, so at <laughs> some point, Dogface will return. I bet you. In canon. No, I bet you. In a, in a. I bet the Ahsoka show. I bet you a hundred dollars. In the Ahsoka in show, the Ahsoka in this show. season one? Yeah, I bet you he's not going to show. Well, yeah, I don't think he will either, but I'm so saying... So then what are we going to make this bet for? Seven years down the line, <laughs> that dog face is somehow going to show up. in the next 50 years, <laughs> dog face will it, return. A hundred dollars. No. Of this. Exactly. You know I'm going to win that, because Dave already forgot about dog face. No, he did. Yeah, he did. There's no way dog face is just going to show up and do it. Dog evil face. dog face dog is going to be on Mount no, Tantus. No, dog face can't Ooh. turn evil. He's too smart. Oh, he's going to bark at me while also slither. He like, survived Order 66, bro. bro. so did, like, everybody else and their mother. Nah, there so was 10,000, 10, <laughs> remember? <laughs> We're 10,000, now there's only 58. Yeah, probably. Um, I don't know, whatever. Um, anyway, that's the show today. Um, next week, we're, next week we're gonna be talking about Marvel stuff, too, by the way. Episode 5 of, um, Secret Invasion just dropped, and I think it's one of the most, it's not a boring, boring show, but it's just idiotic what they've done I haven't even seen that the, show and I can tell you don't, it sucks don't, don't blame me but like they've turned Secret Invasion what should have been again the the, the hype bringing show that it should have been what I think Ahsoka is going to be it, it has it's, trash. it's just bad it just makes no it doesn't and not that it doesn't make sense it's just that they've announced this big like thing that nobody gives a shit about because it doesn't fucking matter. That's like all Marvel stuff now. Yeah, lately, yeah. So we're gonna be talking about that next week. We're gonna be watching Star Wars. We're gonna be watching Rebels season two. Um, if you like this video, please uh, leave it a like. Please subscribe. Um, thank you to all 44 of you who are now following us on YouTube. That's dope. Um, like I said, please subscribe. Send it to your friends. Whatever you gotta do. Um, we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.